Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. With my wife and kids, we run an antique shop in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, filled with some of the most unique items we can find. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. From home, honey. Good morning, everybody. Um, it is a tropical minus 10 degrees Celsius right now. It's the only somewhat warmer day we're gonna have pretty well all week. And I am going to head off to the store uh, because, well, I'm getting ready for an auction sale and I've been sorting and sorting and sorting and I've got about 150 things to go to the auction. Problem is, um, well, it's not a problem. Steven wants to help me tomorrow, which is great. I'm looking forward to the help and getting that done. Here's what the problem is. I've been busy buying stuff over the last few days. And so the entire side of my car is actually full of old Pepsi signs and stuff. So there's not really much room for Steven, especially considering there's an old slot machine sitting where Steven would go. Well, I have to head over to the store, offload all the stuff, um, that needs to come out for the store, things that I'm gonna sell at the shop, and then everything else uh, tomorrow, we're gonna to take to the auction and I'll almost have my garage back again, only to start all over and do this again once we get the next big buy. Uh, but we're gonna take you along for the adventure while I get the stuff unloaded, while we get the auction set up and uh, kind of show you what the day is like. So follow along as we have a busy day running the shop here and um, yeah, well, let's go for a ride. Today's chariot is a 1976 Ford F350, which seems to be doing just fine in inclement weather. It's been a very good vehicle so far. And all those naysayers that say Ford fix or repair daily. Well, this thing was sitting for like, I don't know, close to 30 years and it's been doing great. Okay, first order of business, I've got to offload the truck. Okay, well, that is done. Got my Coke rack here. Probably set it next to my Coke machine or somewhere nearby. But um, all this stuff will get put away after the weekend on Tuesday. I'll get it all sorted. Uh, but now back to the house. Gotta load the truck up with auction stuff. Some things I picked up the other day included this tin plate Porsche, a little police car, kind of a sporty police car, if you ask me. Super snowmobile, little battery operated Japanese built snowmobile. A couple more of these gooseneck lamps because I'm always looking for gooseneck lamps. I use them all around the store for my lights. A Tonka Fair Start Drag Race set, clutch popper set. Some old Japanese domestic import and some Chevy brochures, which there are people who are interested in buying the old brochures that match the car that they thought was kind of cool or that they like. What's this black one here? Yeah, 82 Supra. Actually, my friend Jason has a Supra, I think about that same year. He might be interested in that. And old Pepsi advertising sign. I might put this up somewhere inside the store. The neat thing about this is shaped like a bottle cap. But one of the cooler things I picked up was this. It's a British slot machine. It takes these pence. Well, actually it takes one P. It takes the, bit, the slightly smaller ones, but this one's set to run kind of either way without it. Cool piece, I had 1960s, somewhere in there. Um, not a super expensive slot machine in the world of slot machines, but it's still got that great Art Deco kind of look and it's just a fun thing to have around. Back at the house, now all this stuff I've been piling up, like the military helmets and some of the trains and the toys, all this stuff is gonna have to go to the auction. And I've been busy getting it loaded up in the back of the truck over here. 
because tomorrow morning, my son, Steven, my oldest boy and I are gonna go and we're gonna take this stuff in, get it ready to sell off. But that's gonna be only 150 lots of the nearly 800 lots we need to do. There's gonna be a lot more trips like this to go. It is just after seven in the morning. We're gearing up and getting ready to go and offload stuff at the auction. When I say we, I mean myself and my son, Steven, who's gonna help me. You look like a Cape Crusader with the scarf on. <laughs> He's getting geared up because it's not exactly warm outside right now. I like how you're wearing the scarf over the t-shirt, the protective winter t-shirt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mind you, he doesn't have the uh, flannel wardrobe that I have at the ready. <laughs> but we're gonna go offload the, uh, the truck and I guess we'll do a little bit of a preview of some of the stuff that we brought in, but uh, hopefully it's okay because it has been snowing all night. It's snowing all day today. We better get this done before the weather turns even worse. Okay, you ready? Yeah. All right, let's go brave the outdoors. I just shoveled and it's already getting dusted with snow. You gotta get it before it gets compacted down. I'll have to keep shoveling throughout the day. Otherwise this turns into like styrofoam. Okay, next stop, the auction house. We've arrived, we're the first ones here though. So we're waiting for the, uh, waiting for the gate to open up, which will be in a couple minutes and then we'll get offloaded. Here at the auction, the first order of business is we have to find one of these little carts from somewhere around here. There's some back there that we can use to offload. The first load of goodies. We just have to move it into our little storage space, which is up and around the corner. And uh, keep doing this a few more times till it's full. Okay, well, I am getting all the toys and goodies and trains and radios and all kinds of fun stuff laid out here, ready for the auction, ready for them to inventory. And it is getting to be kind of a nice display already. This is just our first load. There's about eight or nine more loads like this to go, but we've got old toy cars, train sets, engines, N scale, HO scale stuff airplanes, jello coins, all sorts of fun stuff. Even a couple little treasures that I found recently. Military helmet. This uh, I did pick up the other day, the Philco Predictor TV. I haven't been so bold as to try and plug it in yet, but it's in reasonably good shape and that's a very popular, for TV collectors, that's a very popular thing. So I'm sure it will do well, especially considering about the instruction booklet for it. It's a nice, complete piece. Meanwhile, Steven is over here getting the sports cards laid out for our current auction. This is the uh, sports card sale that's ending uh, on the 15th of this month. So this is a variety of some of the hockey stuff and then there's baseball. So he's getting as much as he can fit into these cases out. And uh, I guess I just have to grab the inventory tags and we'll be just about set for this sale. But it's always a, a bit of a feat to know what someone's interested in, whether, you know, this whole case of these are little promotional airplanes that if you were a kid and you went on an airplane for the first time, Trans Canada or Air Canada, they'd give you one of these, here you go, kid, and then they'd probably tussle your head and call you a sport and you get one of these little planes. So this is a little collection of promotional airplanes, uh, old 7-Up bottles, big little books, uh, the Faf uh, Serger sewing machine. There's going to be quite a variety of stuff. The first batch is mainly toys. Uh, the bag full of marbles in the old Trans Canada Airline bag. That's pretty cool. So uh, first batch in. Now I've got to go to the store and try and get uh, another 800 more items or so and bring them down. Okay, well that's done. And you can get your stuff together. We can go. But we've got all of our cards in here for Mickey Mantles. Lots of great rookie cards and stuff. I'm, I'm hoping this will be a good auction sale. 
because there's so much great stuff that's going through. Gordy Howes and Frank Mahovlich rookie cards and I don't know, there's so much good stuff. It's always a gamble taking stuff into auction because we brought in many thousands of dollars worth of cards and it's all anybody's guess what it'll sell for. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Okay, first stop of the day is done. 110 items roughly have been taken over to the auction. We've got some of the display set up for the current auction sale of the sports cards. Now I can carry on with the rest of my day off and uh, get some of our chores done. I have to touch up a couple paint spots in the house. For that, I need to get some color match paints, which is why I am at Home Depot next to the noisiest diesel truck <laughs> known to mankind. Let's go inside. Now, normally you can get the little sample sizes like this, which are great for doing touch-ups. They're only five bucks. Um, the problem is they're completely sold out of all the eggshell, all the ones that I would need, I don't, they don't have. So I am forced to get the quart size, which is 20 bucks. I definitely don't need that much, but I do want to get it touched up today. So $20 it is. One other thing that I need is a lamp cord. Something like that will do. Uh, because I picked up that clock the other day from the estate and I'm not entirely sure if it's uh, functioning or not because the cord on it is really ratty. So I'm going to grab this and fix it up later today too, see if we can get it working again. We are back home safe and sound and I've come into the garage which is looking a little bit emptier now because a lot of the stuff I had piled in here is gone. Uh, but I need to grab the clock that I purchased the other day to try and do a repair on it. I'll show you which one. My giant pile of stuff has dwindled down, but I still need to put these random little bits in a box. Do that later on today. But this is what I came out here for. This old Mintex brake lining clock. This is likely a PAM advertising clock. 1940s, Canadian neon ray. Fantastic advertising piece. The glass on the, the back glass is in really good shape, which is important. But there's no plugging it in with that cable. That would be just a nightmare. Um, so I have no idea if it works. You don't want to plug it in looking like that. So we're going to take it inside and see what's going on. The first thing I've got to do is try and clean this thing up because I don't want to really be working on it with all this dust and debris on here. So we'll get kind of an overview of what it looks like before it's cleaned up. This is how I found it in the garage. We'll do a little bit of cleaning. Good old Windex to the rescue. already see those nice bright colors coming through and see how there's a little bit of um, peeling happening on the back glass that's because somebody put a light bulb in there that was probably too high of wattage for it and it started to peel the paint that's really common on these in fact a lot of times you'll find where the paint is missing entirely in two circles right around here that's because the light bulbs were too hot um, so this side was okay that side and this is generally a two light bulb system that side had too hot of a bulb but that's okay it's not too bad um, it's still going to look nice. We'll get it cleaned up and uh, I've got to take the thing apart, which usually comes apart right here on the bottom. I've got to get pliers and a screwdriver and we'll pop it open. Okay, the first step is loosening the strap that holds the glass on. Spring clip. That comes off. Next, we'll take the glass off. Okay, the glass is off and I've set it over here. It's a good time to clean the glass really thoroughly from the inside and out too, but we'll do that before reassembly. Next step, I've got to take the threaded screw out of the middle here, which holds the hands on. And it's important to remember, you don't want to lose these little parts either, but it's also important to remember in what order they went on. So we're going to loosen these off, take those hands off. And if you're worried about, well, how do I get them on in the right position? You get them on, you set it to, to noon. And if the hands are both straight up and down, you know you've got it on right. So before I flip this over, I'm going to de-spider it because it's got the original, the authentic 1950 spiders on it. Um, I'm going to get that cleaned up and then we'll take the display glass out. And this is probably the most expensive part of this whole clock is this advertisement piece. We're going to take that out so we can get to the guts on the inside. Okay, that looks a little bit different now. I've placed the glass down. I put it on a piece of paper face side down because that surface where the painted surface is scratches super easy so you don't want to clean it too thoroughly you don't want to do anything that's going to really pull or peel that paint off 
I'm leaving that just the way it is. But look, this is that bulb that must have uh, been too high of a wattage and burnt out at some point that peeled that paint. I don't know what they had in there. 50 watt. Yeah, this should be this should have been like a 15 watt bulb. So a little overpowered, but people would just stick in whatever they had in there. I'm gonna take the old bulbs out because I'm actually gonna replace them with a modern, uh, like a, an LED or something like that. That's just gonna uh, not draw as much power. But the, what we need to do, see, this is this is why we're taking this thing all the way apart, is because this cable is completely rotted. Um, to minimize the mess, I'm actually just going to trim it here and just chuck this part out. And uh, the other cables inside are always, well, I shouldn't say always, but generally the inner cables are good because they're protected from the elements. So we should be able to reuse that and just tie in our new wires with these morettes. Try and use the original, original morettes. Um, I even found a brown cable to match, so it should look very authentic. But let me grab some clippers and we'll take that cord off. Old cable is removed. There's nothing really good or salvageable about it. Um, this plug-in, I mean, if I really wanted to, I could save it. Maybe I will, so you have the original type of end, but I'd prefer to use, you know, you want to cheap out on wiring like this. I'd rather just use the new end and uh, make sure that it's safe for everybody. So we're going to throw that out and I'm going to work on pulling it through and then we'll start to tie in our new cable on the inside. Okay, cable is loose on, on the inside. I've got that clipped off, which is fine. You just see how brittle this has become. It's just snapping and chunks of it are falling off. You don't want that at all. So I'm gonna undo the morettes and kind of see what sort of shape the wires are underneath here. Okay, I'm gonna do this one side at a time. I'm gonna take the old wire off and then tie the new wire on. Because if I do this in two separate, if I take them both off, I might forget where all these wires go. And um, I don't wanna do that. So I'm just gonna get my new cable ready and we'll take one off, put a new one on. New cable, brown, just like the old one. Run up through the bottom, like the old one was. Um, except um, this had the original sort of rubber stopper on there. I don't have that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually tie a knot in the cord right near the base here, give myself enough slack to tie into these other lines. And the reason for that knot, many of you will know, is so if somebody yanks on the cable, it doesn't actually pull the wires out of the morettes and cause some kind of horrible malfunction. Uh, it just gives you a little bit of extra protection. So we're gonna tie that knot and then I'm going to uh, get the first wire hooked up. Okay, well that was, I mean, super simple. You just basically put the wire in and twist it and it's on. Um, Morettes are super simple to use. I am going to tighten this thing up a little bit because I can see that the one lamp mount is a little bit loose. So we'll tighten that up. Throw the garbage out, get it cleaned up a little bit and uh, grab a couple new light bulbs and we'll see what works and what doesn't. Some of you at home might be thinking, well, what an ordeal to change the light bulbs on these things. That's not actually the case. The light bulbs are very easy to change because you do it from the back through these little hatches. I'm just doing it now this way because I've already got it apart. Um, it's super cold and wintry outside, if you hadn't noticed. I don't really feel like driving to the store. I should swap these out for a low wattage bulb. I'm putting LEDs in here. So they'll actually, um, they'll be able to test it and see if it's working. But uh, they're going to be a little bit bright, brighter than I'd like. But we'll be able to test it out and see what's going on with it anyway. Bulbs are in. Follow the cord all the way to the wall. Let's see. Okay. We have light. But do we have movement on the clock? One way to find out by sticking the second hand on, seeing if it moves, which it is. So I think this is just about ready to go back together. If the second hand works, odds are that the whole thing is going to work just fine. So let's get it back together and see what we've done here. On goes the freshly cleaned and de-spidered glass. Then your second hand. Now I noticed that the second hand is really bent down. You do want to make sure that the hands don't bump into each other, but that should be a little bit straighter. 
there might be a reason why it's like that, but I'll get the things on there and we'll see how it works. Okay, I've decided to straighten this out just a little bit and I don't want it touching on the glass. We just want it hovering just above the surface. So I gave a wee little bit of a bend at the end there just so the tip hovers. And we don't want this back part bumping into anything either. So let's get the other hands on there and do some final adjustments. Hands are on. And if you remember, I said it was important to get it set to 12 o'clock exactly. That's because um, you'll know that it will move at the exact right times that it should and give the correct time. If you put them on all willy-nilly, probably the name of a great country music artist. Why, wow, folks, welcome to the stage, willy-nilly. Uh, if you put them on all willy-nilly, uh, it will read the incorrect time. So make sure that they're lined up at the 12 o'clock position perfectly. I put the second hand, the second hand doesn't matter too much because it's just a sweeping second hand. But what does matter is having the six in the correct spot. And the six o'clock has to be, see they've got that little line there? That's to line it up perfectly with this, with your little adjuster, with your setter. So now that that's all on and it looks like nothing is bumping, that the hands are all going around just fine, what we're going to do is uh, get ready to put the glass back on and uh, get it all buttoned back down and we'll see what it looks like. And there we go. I mean, other than the fact that I know I need to put lower wattage bulbs in there just so it glows and you don't have that ultra bright spot, it's not gonna burn through because these are LED, they don't put out really any heat at all. Um, but we have a clean working Mintex brake lining clock. So not a bad way to end the day. From a trip to the auction house, cleaning up the garage a little bit, spending time with my son and getting this clock working, um, I'd say it's been all in all a pretty productive day off. Now, I will say this clock in non-working condition, you could pick them up, maybe 50, 100 bucks if you're lucky, something like that. Um, this clock, now that it's working, could be somewhere around 600 to $800. So putting on the new cable, checking it over, tightening things up, really made a big difference for the value. So if you've got one of these old advertising clocks kicking around your garage, you should fix it up, or you could sell it to me. I love this stuff. Pam clocks and Canadian neon ray clocks are some of my most favorite clocks. They're a joy to work on, they look fantastic, and they're an easy seller. So thanks very much for watching today, guys. I hope you enjoyed uh, today's episode where we went and ran some errands and fixed a clock. Uh, if you're interested in attending any of our auctions that we do, you can go to kauctions.ca. Um, our next one is January 15th, which is all the sports cards. There's almost 600 rare sports cards. Um, and then February 5th, I wanna say, is when we do a big antique sale, and that's what I'm getting ready for right now. So guys, thanks for watching again. We'll see you all soon, and as always, Bye for now.